Welcome to another enlightening episode of Physiology Preparation for Assessment Number One. This is Dr. Bison E.M. So, what in this session we're doing question one of this assessment. All right. So you can register with us at a very subsidized price at Excellent Grades Academy on plus two six zero nine seven five four nine seven seven nine zero. Okay, section C, question one says answer all questions and the rest of the questions are in the other videos. The link will be provided in the comment section of this video. Now, it says a physiological experiment is conducted to calculate various body fluid volumes. The proposed method to be used was to slowly infuse a dye, which is also called an indicator, into a 70 kg man's blood. So using a 70 kg man's blood, which is the ideal body weight. And after allowing for equilibration to measure the concentration of the dye in plasma, the indicators were infused as follows. So the first indicator that was used was 250 milligrams of radioiodinated albumin, which, which was infused. Plasma radioiodinated albumin Concentration was detected to be 0 0.1 milligrams. The second indicator that was used was 200 milligrams of sucrose was infused and plasma sucrose concentration was detected as 0 0.01 milligrams per mil during equilibration. 50 milligrams of sucrose was metabolized. Now answer the following. Two, what name is given to the method used in the experiment above to calculate body fluid volumes so I'll, I'll answer it in the next slide here so to this question question two what method is given to this method it's called the indicator dilution method so indicator indicator dilution method indicator dilution method Now, this indicated dilution method was discovered by Stuart and Hamilton. So, sometimes it is some referred to as the Stewart Hamilton indicator dilution method. So, indicator dilution method. Okay. So that, that was this question here. Three says, calculate the following body fluid volumes. The extracellular fluid, okay. extracellular fluid, the plasma fluid, and the interstitial fluid. All right. So now, what we know, so this is number two. What we know is that the ECM, which is the extracellular fluid, is equals to plasma volume plus interstitial fluid volume interstitial fluid volume so we've been asked to calculate all of these three now to calculate plasma volume we use an indicator called radioiodinated albumin okay so to calculate plasma volume We use radio iodinated iodinated albumin. So okay. So albumin here. And they've already given us. So they said two hundred and fifty milligrams of albumin was infused and the concentration was zero point one. So to calculate volume of distribution in plasma, so plasma volume is going to be the concentration of albumin that was infused, not the concentration, the, the mass, pardon me. So it's going to be the mass of albumin that was infused over the concentration. So we know that the concentration that was infused was 250. And the concentration was 0 0.1. So we just do the math here. 250 
milligrams over the 0 0.1 milligrams per mu that was infused. So the milligrams here cancel. When you do the math there, the plasma volume is going to be 2,500 mus. So this is the plasma volume. So that is A. This is the plasma volume that was infused. Okay, that was the plasma volume. Now, let us calculate the ECF volume. The ECF volume using sucrose. So we said 200 milligrams of sucrose was infused. So to calculate the ECF volume, to calculate the ECF volume, we use sucrose or isotonic solutions of sodium chloride. So ECF volume, ECF volume, is going to be the mass that will be present in the body. So mass in body, mass of the indicator in body over concentration. So we know that what was infused according to the question was 200 milligrams, but 50 milligrams was metabolized or used up. And this was the concentration. So what we're remaining within the body is simply 200 milligrams minus 50 milligrams why are we subtracting the 50 because the 50 was used up okay so when you subtract here we're going to have 150 milligrams over the 0 0.01 milligrams that was the concentration okay per mu this is mu so this is mu here so the milligrams cancel you do the math, you're going to have 1,000. Okay, so it is actually going to be 1,500, 15,000 mu. 15,000 mu. So our ECF volume is simply 15,000 mu after we do the math here. 15,000 mu. So we found the ECF volume. Now, to calculate the interstitial volume, we can't measure interstitial volume directly. So, we, we actually measure it from the ECF and the plasma. So, the ECF is equals to plasma minus the interstitial. Minus the interstitial fluid. So, in order for us to calculate interstitial fluid, we can calculate it from interstitial fluid interstitial fluid is equals to ECF minus plasma just using a mathematical relation we know that our ECF volume we found it to be 15,000 mu and our plasma volume we found it to be 2,500 mu here so we just 2,500 mu so when we separate there when we calculate there, what we're going to have is that we we'll have zero, zero here. Let's hope my math is correct. And then here we're going to have five. And then here we're going to have two. Okay. So we're going to have 2,500 mules. So we've done, we've calculated for the ECF volume. We've calculated for the plasma volume and we have calculated for the interstitial fluid volume. Okay, now let's look at the other question. What are they telling us? If the man's hematocriti is 0 0.5, calculate the total blood volume. So in order for you to calculate the total blood volume, there's a formula that we use. So blood volume, total blood volume, Total blood volume is equals to plasma volume. So plasma volume times times hundred over hundred minus 
hematocriti. Okay. So our plasma volume was found to be 2,500 mu according to here. This is our plasma volume. Times 100 over 100 minus the hematocriti that was given here was 0 0.5. So this 0 0.5 simply means that the hematocriti in percentage form is simply uh, 50. So it is 50%. So this 50% is what we are going to put here. Okay. So this is uh, 2,500 mu's times 100 over 50 here. So this goes with this. And then this into this will give us 2. So this is going to be 2,000. When you multiply that, that will give us 0, 0 there. 0. So 5,000 mu, Meaning that our blood volume was 5 liters. This was the total blood volume. So that was how we, asked, we were supposed to solve that question very easy so no the most important thing for you to know is what dye or indicator is used for each body compartment okay so we have body compartments we know that the body body water is divided into the in the the intracellular compartment okay so intracellular fluid intracellular fluid which is denoted as ICF and extracellular fluid extracellular fluid which is the ECF now when it comes to the type of indicators that we use to measure the fluid volume in this uh, compartments for the ICF, we use heavy water, okay, which is called deuterium oxide. Deuterium oxide is denoted as D2O. And we also use tritium oxide. Okay, so this is the, the indicators that are used to measure, pardon me. So these indicators are used to measure total body water so total body water the total amount of water in the body and then they can be used mathematically to calculate the intracellular fluid for the extracellular fluid we use sucrose or we can use inulin or isotonic solutions of sodium chloride but you know that the ECF is divided into plasma and interstitial fluid. So plasma and interstitial fluid. Plasma, we use radioiodinated albumin or Evans blue. So you use Evans blue for albumin or radioiodinated albumin. Iodinated albumin. That's what you use. All right, so... Know this information because sometimes they'll just give you the indicator and then expect you to measure the total body water. Okay. So if you know the total body water and you know the extracellular fluid, you can calculate the interstitial fluid because you know that total body water is simply ICF minus ECF plus ECF. So to calculate the ICF, which cannot be measured directly using a dye, you get the, the total body water that you've calculated from deuterium oxide and tritium oxide minus the ECF. The ECF you calculate from sucrose, inulin, or sodium chloride. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.